Hi guys, we're going to check our classwork that we were assigned on Monday. This should be the paper that says model place value relationships and you were asked to complete your even numbers and to submit in your assignment from Monday's math lesson. The first section, the direction stated, find the value of the underlying digit. In our lesson, we should know that the importance of knowing the word value will change how we need to actually provide our answers. So when we see the word value, we need to remember that word means we're asked how much something is worth. So for the first one, for number two, we had the number 43,782. The seven is underlined, so we have to look at the value of the seven in the place value which it sits. So it's in the hundreds place, so we say this is 700 or it's worth or the value is 700 in that number. For number four, the number originally was 49,254. The nine is underlined. So the worth of the nine in the thousands place is 9,000. For number six, the number is 673,512. The five is underlined. So the five is in the hundreds place. So the value is 500. For number eight, the original number is 736,144. The six is underlined and the six is in the thousands place. So the worth or the value is 6,000. The next section we said could be considered a bonus because this was not explicitly taught to you yet. This is a skill that we will come back to later on in this chapter because we're asking for you to make a comparison of two digits that are in two separate numbers and their comparison of the value. So we have to look at the two numbers that were provided. So when we are going to learn how to do this, we're going to stack our numbers so we can make sure that our place values line up exactly the same and we keep the same digit as originally underlined so we can make the comparison. When we make a comparison, we are going to look at the greater underlying value moving to the smaller. So we talk about going from one place value to the next. So we consider this called a jump. So we're jumping from the thousands place and comparing it to a hundreds place. So when we look at one jump, that's going to signal how much is the time's worth. When we started this chapter, we talked about the difference in place value is in increments of 10. So if we considered one jump to be worth a 10, we can fill in the comparison first. The second thing we are going to um, fill in is the original numbers in the same order. So the value of the two in, and the first number was 2,783, is 10 times the value of the two in the, and then we write the second number. So 7,283. The second problem for the bonus is doing the same work. We take the first number, we rewrite it, keeping the same digit underlined. Then we stack the second number right underneath, lining up the place values, keeping the same one underneath. So when we're looking at the comparison, we're looking at the greater of the two that are underlined. So it doesn't matter if the first one is a larger value, we're looking at the place value that's underlined only. So if we're looking at the bottom number first, we're looking at going from the tens place to the ones place. So we're gonna make one jump in comparison and whatever number is the place I started from, which is in the tens place, this is the number I write first. So 26,475 because it had the larger value of the seven and I still write one jump means it's worth a 10 because it's moving over one jump is one zero. And then I write the first number, but this is going to be placed second because the seven is in the smaller of the place values. So this is just a preview of a skill that we're going to be reviewing and learning in more detail. The next part is asking us to use problem solving and using the table for questions 13 and 14. You were only asked to complete question 14. So the table states the football game attendance on the left hand side is the games. So we see two teams that they're um, playing against and then the attendance of that particular game. 
So for number 14, it says the attendance at which game has a seven in the 10,000s place. So I'm looking for the digit seven, and then I'm looking for the place value 10,000s. So if I forget where the 10,000s place is, I could have my math notebook open, looking at the chart that we um, completed together on Monday for the 10,000s. So when I'm looking, I know this, we start from the right to the left. Right is ones, then we go to tens, then hundreds. We have the break in the period, and that moves to a thousand and ten thousands. So if I'm looking at the second place after the comma, there is only one of the games that has a seven in the tens thousands place. So for my answer, I need to write the game was the Ravens versus the Panthers. So be very careful for what you write as your answer because it said which game. It didn't say which number. Um, it didn't say anything else. It wanted to know which game. So we looked at the title and the chart game and we found the two teams that were playing. Moving to the back of the page, we remember that the first section, the numbers one and two, that is also a review of today's lesson. And then the last four um, that are on the page are called a spiral review. So sometimes it's a preview of something that we're going to be learning in the future, and sometimes it is indeed a spiral back to something we've already learned in fourth grade. So number two said, Hal forgot the number of people at the basketball game. He does remember that the number had a three, so I know that's gonna be important, so I'm gonna circle it, in the tens place. Which number could Hal be thinking? So I'm gonna underline using problem solving strategies. So if I know that three has to be in the tens place, I might draw myself a visual to say, well, the first place is called the one, so we know that that is um, an unknown number, but the next place is our tens place. So we need to make sure that there's a three here. In all of my answer choices, it goes up to the thousands. So I know that I need two more blank spots and then we're going to put the break in the period to show the comma, to show the correct value. So when I compare what I know to what is possible, I can compare and eliminate the ones that don't look the same. So the first one, we look at the second place and that's a two, so I can eliminate. The second choice has a seven in the tens place, so I can eliminate it. The third choice has a one in the tens place, so I eliminate it. And the last one does indeed have a three in the tens place, so I can give it a check and make sure I correctly fill in the bubble. Number four for the spiral review, it says there are eight students in the minibus. Mini Five of the students are boys. So if I know there's eight, we could even draw eight spots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is important information. Five of them are boys, so I can put a B for boys. So one, two, three, four, five. So five are boys. What fraction of the bus are boys? Well, then that tells me that I can fill in the remaining just to have a visual of who indeed is on the bus. So if we know we have one, two, three, four, five parts, so five people out of a possible eight, we need to think about our fraction setup. The first number, the top number, is our numerator or parts to a whole, and the bottom number, the denominator, is how many are in the whole. So if there's eight students on the bus, five are boys, we have the fraction five eighths. So once again, we can eliminate. The first one does not have the correct numerator, the second one is in fact identical to our answer, but we always wanna compare the rest. So the next one is five fifths, which would mean the whole bus was boys. And the last one is eight eighths, and that would mean the whole bus was boys. And that is not the case. So we should be able to fill in B five eighths. The last um, problem on our spiral review says Jeremy drew a polygon. So I know polygon is something that we are talking about in geometry with four right angles. So four tells me this is going to be a quadrilateral. So I'm just gonna abbreviate quad, right angle. So this is a description, four right angles and four sides. So I could go back into my lesson on classifying quadrilaterals to determine which quadrilaterals had four right angles and four sides that have the same length. So that means they would have a tick mark all the way around. 
They would also have the boxes in each of the corners to indicate these are right angles that are 90 degrees. So when I look at my choices and I compare it to the flow chart in my math lesson from our last unit, hexagon tells me there's six sides, square is indeed going to match the characteristics that were described, trapezoid is not because it has two obtuse angles and two acute, and triangle only has three sides. So we have B, the only choice would be square. Make sure you have checked your work. If you have any questions, please make sure you send me a message so we can meet up on Teams and I can make sure that we talk about anything that you need answered.